Welcome to the final module of the first week on ad hoc and implementation based problems. I do hope that you've had a good time solving the problems that we have showcased so far in this week. And as usual, this is a friendly reminder that if you're stuck anywhere at all, then please do join us in the Discord community that has been set up exclusively for this course. Now, in this module, we will be talking about a fun problem called Will It Stop? This problem features in a really nice compendium of contest problems called Looking for a Challenge, Volume 2. And uh, at the time of this recording, this book is freely available from the book's website. So you can find a link in the description below as well as on the course homepage. I should perhaps mention that this book consists of model solutions to problems that featured in the Polish Collegiate Programming Contests, the ones that took place between 2011 and 2014. And while this is an excellent collection of problems, if you are just starting out on your competitive programming journey, you might find that they are a little more advanced than what you are prepared for right now. So this is just to say, don't worry about it and definitely come back to them later when you do have the background to appreciate some of the other problems. This one, uh, the one that we are featuring in this video is problem C and it fortunately requires no specific background and it's a really cute problem so let's get right to it. Let's begin by taking a look at the problem statement without the story for now. So here's the task at hand. We are given the following program. You can see that it's a snippet of code that involves a while loop and a number n, and it seems to be doing something different based on whether the number n is even or odd to begin with. Specifically, if the number n is even, then it seems to be getting halved, and if the number is odd, then it's roughly getting tripled. Uh, specifically, it's uh, transforming as three times n plus three. So at a high level, what's happening is that the number is either becoming smaller or bigger based on whether it was even or odd to begin with. And you can probably already imagine that there might be values of n for which this while loop just goes on and on forever and the program never terminates. It turns out that this is precisely our task. So we are given a number n as input. This number can range anywhere between 2 and 10 raised to 14, which is just to say that this can be a pretty big number to begin with. And we have to identify whether this code that you're seeing on your screen right now terminates when n is given to it as input. Now, what would be the most natural way of trying to solve this problem? Well, it might occur to you that we should just try to simulate this code snippet here on the given value of n and see if it terminates or not. That's fairly natural, but you can probably already see why it's going to be problematic. Of course, if your code actually terminates on n within a small number of steps, then you can confidently conclude that the program indeed terminates. However, suppose your code runs for maybe a thousand steps, 10,000 steps or even 100,000 steps and it's still not terminated. Now can you still confidently conclude that the program will never terminate? Well, these early steps may not be a good indicator of what happens ultimately. It's possible that if you had waited for another three steps, the program would have terminated. It's also possible that you needed to wait for another 10 billion steps before the program actually did terminate. So you can see why this is going to be dicey. Fundamentally, the issue is that just because your program did not terminate in the first so many steps, that's not enough evidence to conclude that it's never going to terminate. So it seems like the real task for us is to identify some pattern on the numbers n for which this code does not terminate and then use that pattern to answer the question. Now, how do we discover this pattern? Maybe we can go back to the simulation approach we were discussing. Yes, I know I just said that it's not going to work, but it's not going to hurt for a bit of a trial and error approach. So let's do this. Let's replicate this code in Python or whatever programming language you're using right now and just run it for some small values of n. Pick a threshold that you like, say 100,000 steps. And let's just identify those values of n for which this program does not terminate even within 100,000 steps and we can flag those values as potentially being those for which the program never terminates. At this point, this is just going to be an educated guess, but it's going to be a good starting point to investigate further. So 
I would really encourage you to pause this video at this point and try this yourself and join me to discuss what we observed. All right, so I hope you had a chance to try that out. Let's take a look. I ran the program for values of n between 2 and 10. And for n equals 2, of course, the program terminated in just one step. But for 3, it seems like the program is getting into the cycle of values between 3, 6, and 12, and it's seemingly going on forever. What about 4? Well, for 4, the, the program terminates in just two steps, but for 5, again, the program eventually gets into the same cycle that we observed for the number 3. Now, 6 is going to be interesting because so far, the program seems to be terminating on even numbers and non-terminating on odd numbers. So we may be tempted to conjecture that that's the pattern. But for 6, it looks like the program is again getting into this 3, 6, 12 kind of cycle. So we're not really sure at this point. For 7, somewhat predictably, the program again gets into this sort of a loop that shows no sign of stopping. But for the next number, which is 8, uh, the program again terminates, this time in just three steps. For 9 and 10, you see that the program again gets into a cycle and shows no signs of stopping. So at this point, can you identify a pattern to at least the three numbers that we have seen so far on which the program seems to terminate? If you ran this program for even more values of n, then you may have a larger stash of numbers on which to guess a pattern. Well, from what we have seen so far, it looks like all the numbers on which the program did terminate happen to be powers of 2. So that seems like a very tempting conjecture to make. Perhaps the program only terminates on powers of 2. Well, it's reasonably easy to see that if you have a power of 2, then the program does terminate. And this is because the program is essentially successively shaving off powers of 2 from n till the number becomes 1. So for instance, if to begin with n was the rth power of 2, then after the first iteration, it would become the r minus 1th power of 2. And after the second iteration, it would become the r minus 2th power of 2, and so on. And after r iterations, the number becomes 2 to the 0, which is 1, at which point the program terminates. Terminates. So to summarize, if n was the rth power of 2, then the program terminates in r iterations. We also saw this with the examples. So when n was equal to 2, then we terminated after one iteration. When n was 4, we terminated in 2. And when n was 8, we terminated in three iterations. So this case is abundantly clear. Now let's consider the other possibility, which is that n is not a power of 2. When n is not a power of 2, let's split things up into two further scenarios. What if n is not a power of 2 and is odd? Well, in this case, notice that n is always going to be a multiple of 3. Indeed, in the very first step, n gets transformed into 3 times n plus 3. So at this point, it's clearly a multiple of 3. And since in future iterations, we never divide by 3, it should be clear that n is always going to be a multiple of 3. For this reason, it's never going to reach a value of 1, and the program is going to run forever. What happens if n is not a power of 2, but it's even to begin with? Then, well, let's just consider the prime factorization of n. It's going to have some powers of 2 and then some other factors as well, because we explicitly said that n is not just a power of 2. So as long as n is divisible by 2, uh, the program is going to enter the first branch of the if statement, and it's going to, again, successively shave off the powers of 2. But when it has no factors of 2 left, you're left with a number that by definition is odd, and you're back to the previous case where n is not a power of 2, and it is odd. And from here on out, it's going to go on forever. So what we have argued after making an educated guess is that well, indeed, the program does not stop if and only if n is not a power of 2. So the program that you have to write at this point is really simple. You just have to check if n is a power of 2 or not. And the way to do that, well, at least one way to do that is to just try and successively divide by n and see where you get stuck. If you go all the way to 1, then n was a power of 2. But if you stop short of something that's different from 1, then n is not a power of 2. Now, if you're used to bit manipulation tricks, then there is a faster way of checking if n is a power of 2 or not. And we will mention this when we get to the summary at the end. So stick around for that. 
Before we go further though, let me just show you the original problem statement so that you can take a look at the story there. I know that normally we are in a big rush to just somehow get rid of the story and quickly identify the abstractions involved. But in this case, I think the story has a little bit of interesting trivia, so I want to tell you about it, especially now that we have more or less solved the problem. So here's how the problem statement goes. Uh, Baitasar, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So Baitasar was wandering around the library of the University of Warsaw and at one of its facades, he noticed a piece of a program with an inscription, will it stop? The question seemed interesting, so Baitasar tried to tackle it after returning home. Unfortunately, when he was writing down the piece of code, he made a mistake and noted the following. And the rest of it is what we have discussed so far. But this might make you curious about a couple of things. First of all, is there such an inscription at the facades of the library of the University of Warsaw? And it turns out that there is indeed such an inscription. Did Baidasar actually make a mistake while noting it down? Uh, it turns out that yes, the original inscription on the facade of the library is a slightly different code snippet. And it's a really small mistake that Baitasar made while noting down this piece of code. Uh, so instead of a plus three in the else statement, we have a plus one. That's it, that is the only difference, but it turns out that it massively changes the nature of the problem. So the mathematician Lothar Kollatz believed that this code stops for any value of n, and it turns out that as of now, nobody really knows if this is true. So of course, people have tried this computationally apart from in other ways, and it has been verified that the program does terminate for some fairly large values of n, but we don't know if this is the case for every n or not. This is a fascinating conjecture with a lot of history, so if you are interested in this, then do look up the Collatz conjecture. I'm sure it'll be a very interesting rabbit hole for you to explore. But let's now recap what we have learned. So for the version of the code that we saw in the problem statement, we can say yes if n is a power of 2 and we can say no if n is not. Now I promised you a bit manipulation trick that would help you identify if n is a power of 2 or not and here it is. So you can test if n is a power of 2 or not by just taking the XOR of n and n minus 1 and doing an AND with n and check if that is n. So you can probably see right away that if n is a power of 2, then this equation is satisfied. Because when you do n XOR n minus 1, you get essentially all 1s. And when you AND that with n, then only the first, the most significant bit is the only one that survives and you get back n. However, it's a little more work to check that this equation actually fails for any value of n which is not a power of 2 and it's a fun little exercise so I'll not spoil it for you. But for now, if you just want to record it as a trick that you can use, then by all means, please do make a note of it. Okay, so all that remains is to actually code this up. As you can imagine, for this problem, the coding bit is really simple, but let's just go through it. Okay, so here is the page which has the problem statement and this is a new platform compared to the ones that you've seen so far. If you're here for the first time on the top right you will see a link which says log in as opposed to your username and if you don't have an account yet then when you click on log in you get a drop down menu which will also give you the opportunity to register. It's a very simple registration form so you should have your account set up in a couple of minutes. It's completely automatic and once you've done all that please make sure to log in. The only reason I'm recommending that you set up an account of your own is because you do need that to be able to actually make a submission. So if you're not logged in, you'll not be able to submit your code. Okay, let's just uh, quickly recap the problem statement. Uh, the contents of the problem itself are exactly as we have discussed. Let's take a note of the input. There's only one line of input and that's the integer n. And the output, well, is yes or no, but notice that it's yes or no in Polish. So let's just take a note of the words. Uh, it's going to be tak or nie. I have no idea again if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but let's just make sure that that's what we output in our program, otherwise the tests are not going to pass. All right, so let's head over to the submission pane. Notice that you cannot right away select the programming language, but once you start typing in here, the dropdown does get activated. So I'm just gonna pick Python because 
Uh, it's a simple program and it shouldn't really make a difference what programming language we use here. So we take in the number n and now we just have to test if it's a power of two or not. So let's use the uh, bit uh, manipulation trick that we just talked about. So we want to do n xor n minus one. So the bitwise xor is the caret symbol in Python and the bitwise and is a single ampersand sign. So we want to ask ourselves if this is true and if it is, then we print duck. And if it is not, then we print near. And that's it, that should be the entire program. Um, notice that the editor interface here does not really have support for tabs. That's why I'm kind of typing out for spaces. You could of course also just code this in your favorite IDE and upload the file instead. But let's just go ahead and make the submission to be sure. I have made a similar submission before, so it might show you my history as well. So at this point, the status is pending. Um, but let me just show you my previous submission, which was very similar. Okay, actually by now my current submission has also run its course and it seems like it has a full score, which means all the tests passed, which is not surprising given that it was a really simple check that needed to be done. So there isn't a whole lot of margin for error here. Uh, but do try this out and uh, see if you manage to also pass all the tests. Uh, you could try doing this the other way where you actually successively divide n by 2 and see if that is within the time limit. I believe that that approach also works just as well. So do give it a shot and let us know how it went for you. This was the final problem that we discussed in this week and I'll be looking forward to seeing you next week and also over at Discord and the Google Groups. Thanks so much and talk soon. Bye for now.